Good afternoon, friends. How are you all? Ugh, I'm still still decorated for summer back there. I need to I need to redo my shelfie, get it ready for fall. I'm slacking over here in my decor department. Maybe Mackenzie would like to do that for me. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day and a great week. Happy hump day. That's exciting. Did you guys get your wrap labels this morning? Do you like this week's wrap labels? I didn't even look at them. Um, so I don't remember exactly which one's probably Halloween y, maybe just fallish. I don't know. Um, uh, to do lists stuck to my computer. Okay, well, we have a ton of questions already, which is excellent. So we're going to jump right in so we don't waste a single moment and start answering these questions. So if you have any crochet business questions, pop them up in the comment section. Sierra will star them and they go into a different folder for me. And I will answer as many as I can in about a 30 minute window. If you're catching the replay, I see you hustling, always putting in business info. And then that's you're going to get out good business. That's what's going to happen. So keep Keep putting it into your body, and that is what will be coming out of your body. So let's get started. Ashley says, hey, Ashley, how are you? I am fine, girl. Thanks for asking. I'm hoping to start my Etsy shop at the first of the year. You have been a wealth of knowledge for me and so encouraging. Just wanted to say thank you for your helpful advice. Well, my pleasure, Ashley. I'm so glad, one, that you find it helpful, two, that you tune in on a regular basis and are able to take in the information, and three, that you're going to take action and open an Etsy shop. I'm very excited for you. Best of luck. I wish you all the sales, all the success. You are doing wonderful things. I will say Crochet Boss Academy doors open in the early spring, late winter. Um, and I can help you a lot inside of Crochet Boss Academy. If you need more um, organized help, then ask Ashley's. That's what Crochet Boss Academy has to offer. So more in depth and more organized. But congratulations, Ashley. I'm excited for you. And thank you for your kind words and encouragement. Lisa says, hey, Ashley. Hey. Do you have plans to make a pattern for the beautiful checkerboard that you make for your husband? If so, I would love to buy it. Thank you for all that you do. So I did have plans to make that, Lisa. Um, I probably need to do that. It would be fairly simple to write up. If I can remember correctly, I used the lemon peel stitch. And something like I used uh, maybe yarn be soft and sleek. But I think you could probably use a like a... Your uh, home decor yarn, maybe, could be cool. Um, and then I had to block it. So, yeah, I should be able to write that up fairly fairly easy. I don't th think a video would be necessary, but I could probably write up that pattern fairly easy. So, I'm going to write it on my to-do list, but I don't even know how long it has been here. Uh, but I'm going to try to write it on my to-do list, and then I'm going to try to do it. Checkerboard pattern. I did see the other day I was researching for a blog post that will be going live soon. And um, somebody, like if you have a checkerboard set out in your home all the time, like Cracker Barrel does, you can use little tiny crocheted pumpkins to be the pieces. Wouldn't that be cute? You'd have to figure out something for a king uh, to make it a king. You could just add something to the top, like a little ring or something that could slip right around the stem. But how cute would like black and red or orange and brown, whatever two colors you want to do. Um, and then your piece, your checker pieces are little pumpkins. That would be so cute. Thank you, Lisa, for your question. I'm glad that you like that design and are interested in the pattern. And I will try my best to get that out for you. Thank you for being here for asking questions. Let's go to the next one, which is Megan. And she says, how do you manage your time being social on social media, answering DMs and comments? Do you block certain times of that day? Okay. So, Megan, time block, it's going to depend on how your brain works and what works best for you. For me, it's I thrive in chaos. So, I mean, I just like when I think about it, I do it. Um, I have been doing it for a long time, though. So I guess it's it's pretty common for me to just open my phone and go to Instagram, check the DMs. I do have a couple of saved responses. Um, not in my DMs. I think I have the how to download an Etsy PDF saved. There, you can do saved responses in on Instagram. Um, and I need to make one. I probably need to make one that's at least how you can find my free patterns or something that I get on a regular basis. But I do have the key, the keyboard shortcut TYSM. And when I type in TYSM, it automatically changes to thank you so much. And I use that all the time. And that gives me a little bit of time. 
when it comes to creating your content and i i recommend so i have not been doing it well since starting homeschool i have this is a new chapter and i have to find my new rhythm um, and also muster up the desire to want to post every day on social media like i have for the last since 2016 at least um so i use trello to organize and plan my social media. I teach this inside of Crochet Boss Academy. You could also use a paper calendar. I used to use that. You can use um, the Facebook business suite, I think is what it's called. You can use that. You can use something like Tailwind, which is paid. So there's plenty of things that you could use to create your content for uh, posting in the future. It's best to batch create and create as much content uh, that you can at a time. It's also best to repurpose as much as possible. So if you are um, packaging up an Etsy order, film it. Film yourself packaging up the Etsy order. Make sure you don't show the shipping label address or your return address if it's public, if it's like on the thing. Um, but set up an overhead filming thing and film it. I have a Amazon storefront and inside that Amazon storefront is a collection of things and it's called photos and video essentials. Um, a crafty concept.com forward slash Amazon will take you to my Amazon storefront. And if you look for photo and video essentials, you can see all the stuff that I use there. Um, Taylor of Taylor Lynn crochet has a YouTube video for how to do overhead filming, set that up and just film your hands. You could do it on a time lapse. You can film it, um, full, full time, like uh, live, not live actual time, actual speed, and then crop out a bunch if you wanted to, or speed it up if you wanted to. Um, I like the cropping out. I think that's a really fast paced video. I think those do well. Um, or crop out a bunch and speed up something. You could do that too. But then you're re you're doing, you're working twice as, twice as much output with the same input. They've got to package the order anyway, so you might as well record it. And then you can post that on Instagram later. If you take pictures for your Etsy shop, you can post those on Instagram later. Maybe you have a, you set up yourself a little photo shoot day and you set a camera or a backup phone or an iPad or something on a tripod off to the side and you film yourself in a time lapse taking all the pictures that you need for your Etsy listings. And then you have you have the video of you and then you have all the pictures of the finished thing. So that's lots of stuff that you could do to repurpose and reuse everything that you've done over and over again. The post that I posted yesterday, I recorded in 2020, I think. And it was this little, I recorded that video in 2020. And then I added all those pictures that I had taken in 2020 and made a, a reel with a sound that's fairly trendy right now. And for every one of those bumps, I changed the picture. And you can use it as a template probably if you wanted to. And then you could do that. Um, but that's what I recommend. Repurpose and batch create. Those are going to be the best things that you can do to um, get the most out of your time. Mm, and for, for scheduling, that's going to depend on your personality. If you are an A type person, I think that's the right the right letter, um, and you like to have everything planned out to the minute, do that. Schedule in. Give yourself one day a week where you plan 30 minutes to an hour to pre-plan pre like what you're going to post. So like maybe you want to post every day. So you write Monday through Sunday on a piece of paper and then a dash, and then you write what you want to post that day. And then maybe even record some videos if you've got time left. Um, if not, schedule another day where you have a record day and you're recording all of the videos that you need for the month or the next couple of weeks or whatever it is that you can do. Um, so whatever your schedule looks like, you do you, whichever one's going to give you the most peace. I end up doing it on the fly, which can be stressful to some people. To me, it's not that stressful. I don't love it. I would rather it had already been done. I, I like the feel of being productive and getting a whole bunch done at once. Um, but it, does, it hasn't been working for me during my homeschool season. I have been putting a lot of energy into homeschool, like a lot. I created um, little flip books for Ava. Let me see if I got an example one. No. Anyway, um, we're doing like different body systems inside of homeschool. And I made a flip book for each of the different body systems, which is like it's a horizontal and then each page is cut to a different length. So you can easily grab the, the spot that you need to be at. 
and she is coloring them and filling in blanks as we learn about the different body parts in the different um, systems of the body. And I made all of that from scratch. I like found resources to use. I Googled these things. I've, do, I've done all of it from scratch myself and it's taken hours and hours and hours of my time. I've also created spelling worksheets for her from scratch. I've created um, like big activities, looking up science experiments. Like I was trying to find a good science experiment for talking about the excretory system, I think is how you say it like peeing and I couldn't find a good one. But then I was thinking, oh, the kidneys filter the blood. So we're going to make a filter. We're going to filter creek water. And we're going to say, this is how the kidneys is. So it's kind of like this. The kidneys filter blood. We're filtering creek water. And hopefully that will stick out in her mind. But I'm doing all this stuff and I'm going above and beyond. I do not need to go this hard, but I can't help it. I want to invest in her education. I want her brain to be able to think well. I don't care how smart she is. Like, I don't care if she can memorize this stuff. I want her brain to think well, to take information and then do with it what's necessary. And then to be creative and to think outside of the box and to broaden with what little information you get. If you get a little bit of information, how much can you broad or expand on that? So that's it's a lot. We're doing a lot with homeschool right now. But the good news is, um, hey, Nicole. I've already got the next six weeks done. Well, this week and then five more after that. And then we have a break. So on that break, I will do the next six weeks. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. But that's the good news. The bad news is I keep adding to it. Um, so if I can limit, if I can stop doing that, I'll be good to go. Um, but that's why I've been struggling with my time management recently. It's because I've added this whole new chapter. And it's almost like another business, kind of. Except I don't have to, like, sell the things. But I do have to make the things. Um, and I, I really don't know any other way. So long story long. I hope that was helpful, Megan. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. I have been using teachers, pay teachers. Um, I bought two or three things from there. And then I've also gotten some ideas from there that I just made. Thanks, Deanna, um, that I just made myself. Uh, I was looking up how to teach the seven elements of art. And one of the seven elements is texture. And one of the teachers on Teachers Pay Teachers had a monster it was from where the wild things are and you're supposed to like read the book and then do the thing. Uh, but I was thinking like Halloween time, we could do it. But she uses texture to fill in the different parts of the of the monster, which I thought was fun. So we'll, we'll be doing that. We won't be doing it until week 12. So it's after th after Halloween. Um, but it, I still I mean, I saw that idea on Teachers Pay Teachers and then I just kind of went with it. But I can't help it. I don't know any other way. Uh, so that's what's taking up a lot of my time. So I need to start sharing more of that journey on social media. So I'm working smarter, not harder, right? So like I'm doing these things anyway. I might as well share them with you guys. I'm a little bit worried that people are going to want them. And I don't have a strategic way to sell them or even give them for free. Because if I add it to my blog, it's going to mess with my Google juice. And if I add it to my Etsy, it's going to mess with my Etsy juice. Um, I could maybe start a teacher's paid teacher's account where you like a selling account that's probably the best option that i have but then it, it worries me about my my curriculum my my content being accurate so i need to have like a big disclaimer it's like first timer take this with a grain of salt double check the work if you don't want to pay for it th this is not the thing for you but that's what we got um we'll see but hopefully hopefully we're able to find a good rhythm eventually i feel like my mental health is getting better which means I'm going to be able to um, work even if I don't necessarily want to. Like I have 130 emails that I need to read. Uh, actually, like probably half of them are junk that I'll just throw right in the spam thing. But uh, I got to do some stuff, right? Got to do some stuff. Hope that was helpful, Megan. I know that was super long. That is how my brain works. Oh, thank you for your encouragement, Brandy and Deanna. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Waynell. It's on the teacher standards are met. Yeah, I'm a little worried that maybe the, the content isn't exact. Um, like today we were doing skin as part of the excretory system. And I had a little picture of like a cube of skin, you know, like a diagram. And um, the, the thing that I was looking at for the answer key had a sweat gland marked as a um, oil gland. And we almost got it wrong, but then, I, yeah, yeah, we almost got it wrong, but then I caught it and we got it right. But that's what I'm worried about. 
but we'll see. Okay. A poet's note. Tips or advice on camera. I'm just going to read it in my head while I take a drink of coffee. Okay. A poet's note. She has questions about video and starting a YouTube channel. So are you hanging out, a poet's note? Are you live with us right now or are you maybe catching the replay? Um, let me know if you're here. I'm going to just start talking. So if you're going to start a YouTube channel, I'm assuming you are a designer. If you are a finished piece seller and you want to start a YouTube channel, that's a whole different conversation, which is my area of expertise. So let me know if that's the direction we need to go in. But I'm assuming it's probably um, as a designer because usually it's not on the radar of finished piece sellers. Unless, of course, you just want to start doing YouTube shorts, which is the same as TikTok. So you can repurpose all of your TikTok videos, all of your reels to YouTube shorts. You could start doing that today. You can make a YouTube account um, and then post and schedule a bunch of YouTube shorts of showing your content that you've already created. Uh, that's something that you could start doing immediately. Mackenzie does that for me here. She repurposes everything over on YouTube shorts. I will tell you that I have gotten 9 million views on my YouTube channel. I think that's of all time. And, or maybe, yeah, 9 million views. And 90, 90, thousand subscribers on YouTube. My goal this year was to get to 100 and I was very excited and I was doing all the things. But then I realized that I keep going up by 10,000 and then I check and my money's not going up. My views aren't going up. And it's very hard for me to make it a priority. The, the uh, ghost bag did not have a video. Um, the checkerboard might not have a video. Like it's very difficult for me because it'll get like a thousand views and I don't make any money off of that. Like it's not enough money for it to be worth my, like it's a lot to, to make a YouTube video, um, a poet's note, a lot. It is a whole business just on its own. If that was all that you did, you would be exhausted. It is a lot. I have an editor now. He is a dream. Um, I'm here, finished, just seeing a lot of people doing, oh, finished show prep. Okay, so a poet's note, if you're selling finished pieces, your ideal customer does not care about your craft show setup. Um, decisions. Other people who sell finished pieces care about your craft show setup decisions. So if you want to build a, if you want to add a branch of your business to where you are also educating other finished piece sellers, then you will have two businesses. It is exhausting. It is hard, but it is doable and it is rewarding. Um, if you want to just have one business, you need to have one ideal customer that needs to be able to Absorb all of the information you create, 100% of the information you create. You do not want to create 50% of information for this group of people and 50% of information for this group of people because every time you make this post, these people are going to feel like they're on the outside looking in and vice versa. So it's best to have one ideal customer per business. Can you do it the other way? Can you have multiple? You can. You can. It's just significantly much harder to build strong relationships with people that way. That is why I don't have, um, I don't teach pattern designers and finished piece sellers. I just teach finished piece sellers. I do not do anything with design at all. I don't teach it. I don't make resources for it. I don't make blog, nothing, zero. Everything I do is for finished piece only. Um, now, does some of my information that I provide to finished piece people help designers? Absolutely. Business is business across the board. Uh, marketing is marketing. Um, creating graphic design type stuff for this business is also going to help you do it for this business. So absolutely, there's going to be overlap in your audience. But my ideal, my specific, my perfect person is a finished piece seller. And then everybody outside of that is under the umbrella that my content can serve. But this is who I'm talking to always. I'm always talking to this person and this person knows that they have my full attention. And if I post something, it is 100% for them. Except for the fact that I started throwing in homeschool stuff and hippie stuff. That's extra. And that's just because that's what I'm currently doing in my life. And if I didn't share about that, I would have nothing to share about. So um, up until this point, I had only ever shared finished piece seller stuff. Um, I also get crocheters who don't sell their finished pieces. They just are hobbyists or they do gifting or they just crochet for themselves. Absolutely. 
my crochet patterns are good whether you sell your stuff or not, right? So there's a, there's a branch, there's an umbrella. You're going to reach other people and that's good. Um, but you need to speak to the one because that is how you're going to build a, a, a relationship with them. That is going to have you have your business on a sturdy foundation. You're going to be known for the thing that it is you do. People are going to think of you specifically when they think of the thing that you do. And they're going to feel they're going to feel really like connected to you. You guys are going to be really close emotionally. I've had people following me today that's probably in here right now that have been with me since 2016, maybe 2017, because that's when I started focusing on design. Um, and then 2018 is when I started focusing more on business type stuff. It might have been 2019. Might have been 2019. No, it was March 2020. <laughs> yeah, it was right at the peak of misery. That's when Crochet Boss Academy launched. But we had the membership first, so I don't remember. The dates dates get confused, confusing in my head. But so if you want to have a YouTube channel selling finished pieces, you need to speak to that ideal customer in your videos. So you need to create content that would make sense to your ideal customer around the types of things that you sell. So if you sell home decor, you could have a YouTube channel decorating your home, different rooms for different seasons, all shelfies, uh, tablescapes, is that a thing? Like uh, coffee tables, mantles, whatever. For different seasons, go out, go nuts. That's what your whole channel could be is, is home decor. You would have a home decor channel and you feature your handmade home decor things on a regular basis. You could show them how to wash the things. You could show them how to store the things. You could show them how to wrap the things if they're gifting them. Maybe it's difficult to, to wrap a crocheted pumpkin. So you make a video showing you how to wrap a crocheted pumpkin. Um, maybe you, your ideal customer is definitely, you know, they're definitely gifting these things. So maybe you create some wrap labels or um, not wrap labels, like gift tags that they can print out and attach to their product that they bought from you. Or maybe you could include gift tags in with your order, um, something like that, something specific to the person buying it. Just because you watch a lot of YouTube videos from people teaching you how to do well at your markets and how to crochet, doesn't mean that's the only type of content there is to create in this niche. You can still create content for your ideal customer on YouTube. Um, just make sure you're staying niched and always tying it into your products at like 80% of the time, like 80% of the time you want to be featuring your products. You don't want to say go buy my thing, but you, if you're showing a, a fall mantle scape, scape, is that, why do I keep saying that? If you're showing a fall mantle plan, put some of your, your decor in there that you sell in your shop and then link it in the thing. Pumpkins are from me at a crafty concept link here. That's what I would do. You want to keep it ideal customer specific always. More or helping people who also do shows or want to get into it. How to prep and plan and packaging. So yeah, that's going to be a new ideal customer. A poet's note. That's a new business. is Or like you'll be pivoting your old businesses, which, which is what I did. Um, but it's very, very, very hard. Hard, not impossible to have two ideal customers in the same business. Very hard. Um, I hope that was helpful. Okay, thank you for your question. Let's see if we can pound through these. We got like six minutes. How do you decide to keep pushing your Claire Bun Beanie orders out instead of doing batch drops like some makers do? And having you as an example was so helpful. So, are you telling me that you are getting a ton of bag orders and you're trying to decide to either do drops or? Um, Print on demand, not print on, make on demand, made to order. So that's just going to be how your brain works, Megan, your why and what success looks like to you. With a make to order business model, you there is no ceiling. You just keep extending your turnaround time. Every time you, you pin your listings on Etsy to Pinterest, those links will always lead back to you. If you pin your, your products that you dropped, once it's sold, the one thing is that you're going to have to also make Etsy listings for every single one of these always. Um, so if, say you're dropping 20 new beanies and you're doing a variety of colors, you're going to have to make 20 new Etsy listings and it's only going to sell one time and then it's gone. If you're doing made to order, you narrow down your color palette, list those 10 different colors. They're up all the time. They never die. They never sell out. You keep adding to the quantities. You keep extending your turnaround time. If you want 
only a certain amount of money or sales and that's your ideal level of success and that's going to make you happier reach your goals and you think a drop style is more suited to your um like personal schedule like how your lifestyle things like that then do that but just know that pinterest isn't going to be your best friend with that style and pinterest is a huge free traffic driver um and you're going to be working really hard doing the same stuff over and over again creating etsy listings that are only going to be active and then gone like very like then you have to do it all over again for your next one it's it's kind of a lot um but you can you can like copy and you and edit make templates things like that if that's easier um so i when I, when my etsy shop went viral i just kept turning extending my turnaround time i talk about that in a lot of ask ashley's and i was able to make over a hundred thousand dollars in revenue that year and i didn't know that until i did my master class last last february then i realized that that's how much it was because that's not how much i brought home um but that's how much i it was in revenue it was over a hundred thousand dollars and it was like second or third year on etsy maybe second year on etsy it was amazing it was so much fun but i kept turning my extending my turnaround time um and those listings i kept adding to the quantity because if i can have if i can get the yarn i added to the quantity if the yarn goes out of stock or dis discontinued my listing goes away but if as long as i can continue to get to the the yarn those listings stay active so that's what works for me um you just gotta do what works best for you and what your um current season of life okay hopefully that was helpful megan thank you for your question McKenna says, is it worth it to sell hats with detachable palms? Is it easier to wash? Uh, sure. People sell them with detachable palms and then people don't sell them with detachable palms. Um, I have found that wash on gentle, lay flat to dry works fine for my faux fur palms. If you're doing a yarn palm, it will not work. Your yarn will come apart. Um, but for my faux fur palms, wash on gentle, lay flat to dry is no problem. But if you wanted to make them detachable, you could also sell them in in bundles or sets where they get one beanie but three palms and they can change the style of the palm um of the beanie just by changing out the palm and you can also say it's easier for cleaning they can just remove the palm um and then wash the thing if they need to uh sierra is here and she is our palm expert so i'm gonna uh, see if she wants to in continue any information for you um mckenna but that's you can you can sell them or you can it's up to you like it's always going to be worth it whatever direction you take is going to be fine there's not a right or wrong hopefully that was helpful brandy says how do you keep your items from stretching over time i'm making mug koozies but worry about the safety as the yarn stretches over time um so i personally just kind of pull them back into shape so like i'll have um a claire cozy i think it's in my purse because i was using it the other day and i'll just kind of roll it up and then pull it like like this to kind of pull the stitches back into place you could probably also just wash them and that might tighten things back up um but that's going to be one of the one of the downsides of having crocheted things right you might need to make sure you use a yarn that's more resilient and does it lose its shape or stretch out drastically um do some trial and error make do like if you're making coffee cozies make like five in five different yarns and maybe stretch them as far as they'll go and put it like around a mason jar or something leave them stretched for like a week and then go take them all and and give them a pull and see if the stitches go back into place and then it's good to go and put it back on there see if it's stretched out or if it's good to go um you could also measure them before and after do do a little experimenting and see which of the yarns and patterns also play with different patterns because you might find one that tends to keep shape better than others and take your audience on the journey with you. You can say, I am in the market. I'm on a mission to find the perfect coffee cozy that will stand the test of time and will never lose its shape. Come on this journey with me and then make posts on a regular basis about it. These are the five yarns I'm going to try. Uh, these are the, the pattern. I'm gonna, first, I'm going to try these five yarns with this pattern. Then I'm going to try these five yarns with this pattern. I'm going to try these five yarns with this pattern, but I'm going to drop down a hook size. Things like that. Take your people on the journey with you. They will really um, enjoy watching that with you, watching you go through that. Okay. <clears throat> Um, Katie says, do you wash your items? I do not because people have different allergies to different soaps. I do not. Um, next question. 
I bet to customers who buy my products as gifts. I'm seeing them pop up on Instagram on models, but they don't give me credit. Is there a way I can encourage my customers? Absolutely. You can start sharing the people who do give you credit. Um, when So if someone tags you in the thing, tell them thank you and ask if you can reshare it and then post it on your Instagram and say huge shout out to at so-and-so uh, for tagging me in her whatever. I'm so glad they love I'm so glad their sister-in-law loved their beanie. Like go into their story, read their caption. Uh, if they gave you any back and forth in the DMs, remember that information and tell the story in your post. And then other people who see that post will, will be like, make sure you tag them. If you share about it, make sure you tag. It. Also, I would include a thing that says a, like a business card or a little, a little um, insert that says, posting posting any pics on social media we'd love to see and then tag us and then a qr code and i would um include like a couple of them with the like maybe two with the thing so it is hopefully the the gift buyer will will see it but then also the gift recipient you could also if you're selling beanies and you think that they're going to be gifted you could have them pre pre um wrapped or whatever packaged so and you can make that part of your marketing is all of these are coming packaged and ready to be gifted right so all they have to do is stick it in the bag i'm trying to find a wrap label but i don't have any i, ha I have some thank you notes at my disposal but i don't have any wrap labels because you could take wrap labels that i've designed or you could design your own on canva i can't find any right now which is very odd to me um i have all these things, APC freebie. Let me, let me just double check. Because then you could package your beanies with a wrap label on them that says um, gift for you or have Merry Christmas or Happy Halloween, whatever it is that your uh, the season is that you're marketing for. And it will be wrapped around the beanie already. And then you can market to your my, my laundry is ready to be. You can market to your gift buyer that this is already ready to be gifted. I've done all the hard work for you. All you got to do is hand it to the gift recipient or pop it in a bag or something. You could tell them that. And then on the wrap label, it on the back of it, because it wrap labels are like long and skinny like this. And this is the middle and you wrap it around the beanie like this and you tape it and they see this middle part and it says Merry Christmas. But if they turn it around, it could say, um, we'd love to see, we'd love to see your thing. Um, you'd have to do some better wording than that. You could even do a QR code to your Etsy shop, or, um, you could even give out freebies or, or coupon codes or something, or say you could be featured on our account, tag us and you could be featured. People love to be featured, especially if you have a large following, they're going to think that's very cool. Um, so that's some things that you can do. That's the best thing to do to get people to, to give you credit. What's not the best thing to do is to message the gift recipient and say, hey, I see you're wearing um, one of my beanies. That looks fantastic. Would you mind to tag me? That would irritate me to death. Now, the worst thing they can do is say no. So if that's your cup of tea, go for it. Give it a try. Um, but it's better to show them the correct behavior than to try to correct wrong behavior, if that makes sense, uh, psychology-wise. Showing them... Um, highlighting the correct behavior that you want, uh, holding them up on a pedestal, things like that. That is going to help curate that kind of behavior from everybody else. Okay, hopefully that was, we got one more real quick from Bridget. And she says, how did you decide the direction you wanted your business to go? I'm all over the place and I can't seem to find success. So Bridget, my best tip for that is to focus on what's important to you as a person, what you can manage with your current season of life. That will help you stay true to your why. Why are you in business? Are you in business because you want to be able to leave your day job and stay at home with your kids during their developmental years? That's very important to you. You're very maternal. If that's your why, and then you're going to need to choose a business path that helps you stay true to that why. If you choose a path that makes you never get to be with your family because you're doing this, this, and this all the time, that's not your why. Choose the path that helps you stay connected to your why. 
Um, let me just say, trying to do both paths is going to keep you very away from your family all the time. So choose the one that is more appropriate for your current season of life. If it's easier for you to crochet things while you're watching your kids play or you're at the park and you can just crochet or you're at drilling practice, whatever, if it's easier for you to be crocheting and selling finished pieces, go that route. If it's easier for you to go to your office from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. and crank out designs all night long while everybody's asleep and then you can wake up with them in the morning at like 9 a.m. or whatever they get up, that would be glorious. 9 a.m. would be glorious. Um, then maybe that's your jam. And then you're not working throughout the day. You're not crocheting throughout the day. You only work at night. That's how I built my business. So you need to choose the path that makes sense for your why and your current season of life. And then the one that brings you the most joy. I found that I get more joy from helping other crocheters start their businesses than I did from um, like selling finished pieces. So I was selling Claire Bun beanies. I don't have, it doesn't bring me joy to watch women have joy in their Claire Bun beanies. Like, I like it. Sure. I like that you like what I made. That's awesome. But it doesn't fulfill me. Now, if I was selling um, Montessori toys and I was niched to where people were using my toys. So, so let's say I'm a book lover. I love to read. I read every day. All the time. I've read 20 books in a day. You know, I'm a reader um, and I get lost in my story. I'm very imaginative. I'm a reader. This is not true, but pretend it is. Um, and then I sold uh, Gracie dolls, mm-hmm. Gracie dolls, and then other animals, not just unicorns, like a whole line, a whole line of animals in this rag doll style. And I marketed them as book buddies. I gave book recommendations for the different types of animals. And I was helping to curate a love of reading in young readers. And I was giving mothers a resource that they could use to get their kids to want to read and say that they can read to their Gracie doll. They can act out the story with their animal that's talking about the animal and the thing. So maybe um, I sold a bear and I included in their order some laminated like like flashcards almost that was like too 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 big too small just right too hot too cold just right and they could tell the story and that she could like have the kid using the the bear and the the, then he'd be like oh it's too cold oh oh it's too hot oh that's just right you know what i mean that would bring me joy to watch kids start to have a love for reading because i have a love for reading and i love and i know the impact that that can have on a on a life that would bring me immense, immense joy um, if I was selling finished pieces in that way. So you need to do what's going to bring you the most joy, what you can most likely, like what makes the most sense for your current season of business and to help you stick to your why. That's the path that you need to take. You also need to be flexible to bob and weave where the winds take you. Okay, not loosey-goosey. We want to be, we want to be structured but we also want to be flexible. I never started out my business to be a designer or a, or an educator. I was selling stuffies. Um, this little guy, these two little guys right here. That's the only, only thing I wanted to do was to sell kids toys. Then the beanies went viral, not mine. Somebody else's beanies went viral. And everybody that knew that I crocheted was like, can you make these? Can you make these? Can you make these? And I was like, well, fine. I did not want to make them. And then I made them and then they blew up. And then people were like, wanting the pattern which i had thankfully already had at that point because i was uh, started making patterns before the beanie blew up um and i was just dipping my toes because people were asking me for them and i was like sure i can i can make that look more organized and put it together for you no problem um so i went with where i was led right and i still was selling finished pieces and if i got to the point where designing was affecting my finished pieces i would have stopped i would have stopped designing i would have stayed here if this was still growing and doing excuse me, what I wanted it to do, I would have put my energy here. But I I went with the wind and I'm and I made the best judgment based on my circumstances. Um and I kept doing that over and over again. Jump over hurdles as they you come to them. That's what I do. Some people like to plan out where all the hurdles are so they know when to jump. My friend Taylor, that's her. She's a hurdle planner. I jump over them as they come. If I'm running and there's a hurdle, I'm gonna jump over it. Entrepreneurs are very we're very uh, prop. We're problem solvers, right? We're creative thinking in that manner, not creative like art, but creative in like outcomes. 
So trust yourself, trust your instincts, listen to your gut, pray about it if you are a religious folk, um, and, and do the best that you can. And know that you can never mess it up. You can always change. You can always pivot. You can always start over. There's no rules. Just listen to yourself, listen to your gut, and um, pay attention to what's going on around you. Okay. Thank you, Brandy. I appreciate your encouragement more than you know. Thank you guys for hanging out today. That is all of the questions. We're just over 30 minutes at 2.30, 2 40. Um, I'm going to go do my laundry because I'm washing a bunch of whip bags that I found in my barn, like 10 of them. So I needed those uh, so I can organize my mess. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day, a great rest of your week. I will see you next week, same time, same place, uh, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the internet, YouTube. Okay, so next week we're in October. So all of October will be 2 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays. But October 25th, go ahead and mark this down. No Ask Ashley on October 25th. I have a psychiatry appointment that day with my psychiatrist and it cannot be moved or rearranged. I tried. She's only in the office like two, twice a week. So um, getting in with her is almost impossible. I can't change it. It's at two o'clock. This is at two o'clock. So every Wednesday in October at two o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for October 25th. No Ask Ashley on October 25th. Sierra coming in hot with the banner. Okay, friends, that's all I have. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Calls for an Instagram shout out. I always want to do that. Let's just do key. Okay, I'll see you guys next week.